Hey, hey, what is going on, everyone? Today, I want to read a little story for you. There are some people in the hallway, so hopefully I don't get too interrupted here. But if you're looking for something to read and you don't want to read it on your own, I have a story for you. It's called The Goat and the Rock. And I read it this weekend. And I thought it was pretty good. So I would love to share it with you. The Goat and the Rock. You can see we have uh, this goat looking rather scared, I guess you would say. And then we have this uh, milk jug here. <clears throat> uh, we should probably read the caption. The goat leapt onto the rock and knocked over the jug, which broke. Who is to blame? It happened one day that a milk seller was busily doing business. He walked up and down the winding, narrow streets of town, carrying a large clay jug filled with milk and calling in his loudest voice, milk for sale, fresh milk for sale. Whenever someone needed milk, they would open their door to him. The peddler, one of our words from last week, the peddler would pour his milk into the customer's pitcher, collect a few coins and continue on his way crying, fresh milk for sale. Soon it was lunchtime and the peddler decided to rest in the shade of a large rock. He set the heavy milk jug, now half empty, down on a flat spot on top of the rock and began to eat his hard cheese and dark bread. <sighs> Sounds like a good lunch, huh? Hard cheese and dark bread. Soon a goatard, and I had to look this word up. It's not something we uh, use a lot, but think of shepherd. Hang on. Can I do this? I think... I don't know if I can do this or not. Can I put a comment here? No, I can't. No, I can't. Shepherd. It's one who like herds sheep. Well, goatard. We don't use that term much, right? But a goatard is someone who herds goats. Soon a goatard came down the road driving a small number of bleating animals. They're not bleating. Bleeding, this is not blood, but it's the sound they're making. Bleating animals in front of him. Upon seeing the milk seller, he called out in a loud and happy, called out a loud and happy, hello. The sudden sound startled the lead goat, and she leapt up onto the rock, knocked the jug over. It fell to the ground and broke into several pieces. The milk seller was furious and demanded payment for both jug and lost milk. But the herdsman explain that it wasn't his fault. It was the fault of the goat. They argued long into the afternoon and at last agreed to take their case before the local judge. The judge listened patiently to each of the men and then said, it's obvious that the milk seller has lost his jug and his milk through no fault of his own. Without his jug, he will not be able to conduct his business and feed his family. It's just as obvious that the goatard is not at fault. He meant no harm with his friendly greeting. If he sold his goats to pay for the damage, he would not be able to feed his family. Therefore, the blame lies with the goat and the rock. I'll have them arrested at once. They shall be tried at noon tomorrow. The goat and the rock were placed under arrest and taken to prison. The goat went peacefully, but the rock was stubborn had to be carried by 20 strong men. Must be a very big rock. 20 men carrying a rock must be a big rock, but he was stubborn. He was resisting arrest. News of the strange event traveled swiftly throughout the city, and everyone wanted to attend the trial of the goat and the rock. The people knew the judge was fair, but this sounded like madness. The following day, the courtyard was packed with curious citizens. The judge smiled when he saw the crowd and ordered the goats, no, sorry, ordered the guards to close the gates and lock everyone in. Then he spoke to the assembled citizens. You have all come to witness the trial of a goat and a rock. But as you realize, we have no laws by which to judge them. Therefore, you must think that I've gone mad and you've actually come to see me do something foolish. I'm disappointed in you for thinking such a terrible thing about me. And I've decided to fine each of you one penny 
for improper thoughts. You must pay the fine to leave the courtyard. So you see what the judge is doing? He ordered everybody. He didn't order. He didn't actually order. He just said there will be a trial. And so a lot of people came. This is just a crowd. We don't know how many people came. But everybody came. And then he said, you all are thinking that I'm foolish. I fine you one penny. This must have happened a long time ago because a penny doesn't go very far these days. But the people laughed. See, they're in on the joke too. The people laughed and happily paid the small fine. Of course, the judge gave all the pennies to the milk seller who was then able to buy another jug, fill it with fresh milk and continue on down the winding streets, joyfully calling milk for sale, fresh milk for sale. All right. I hope you enjoyed that one. I thought that was kind of funny. The judge was in on the joke. Everybody's happy at the end of the day. The people had to pay a penny, put all the pennies together. You know, the milk seller gets to feed his family. The goatard, he didn't have to pay any money. It really wasn't his fault. The goat's fault and the rock. The rock. Do you smell what the rock is cooking? Sorry, that was a lame dad joke, but uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. And um, it only took six minutes, so uh, hopefully it wasn't too much of a waste of your time. Okay, I will see you all later.